When a global plant virus first appeared three years ago, it immediately began to decimate the majority of our ecosystems. Severe autoimmune disorders are brought on by eating virus-contaminated food, and the loss of plant life has resulted in a 10% reduction in atmospheric oxygen which has increased the frequency of natural disasters around the planet. Leading scientific institutions throughout the globe have been unable to find a solution, and people are beginning to believe that the Earth is doomed. The only remaining hope is Project Gemini, which Dr. Stephen developed around two ancient alien artifacts. Paleontologists believe the artifacts are 4 billion years old, which is before there was any life on Earth. In order to develop a ship that could fly autonomously and find a suitable planet to terraform, Stephen's team had to reproduce the sphere and the engine's super tough components and make replicas of them. The sphere, which is used to create life and functions as a result of numerous commands that the team has finally finished deciphering, is evidence that life on Earth was originated by extraterrestrials. Doctors and military pilots will be part of a team that will go to the solar system tests, many hundred light years away, to build Earth 2.0 using the sphere. Amy, Stephen's wife, is opposed to him going on this trip. She still arrives at the base the day of the launch to try to stop Stephen from departing, but she is late and must watch as the ship departs the Earth. An odd break on the alien sphere occurs when the ship departs the atmosphere, suggesting they might not be alone. The ship opens a warping gateway using the alien engine technology, enabling them to travel around the cosmos. But as soon as they cross across, the systems reveal a mistake. They haven't actually arrived at Tess, instead, they're somewhere else. Engineer Peter is temporarily stripped of his job after Steven accuses him of entering the coordinates incorrectly. Later, as Steven relaxes, he continues to reflect on Amy, as well as the first time he used the sphere when it permitted him to view an odd humanoid form that vanished in an instant. The team is then instructed by Steven to attempt to set the jump trajectory in order to determine their location, but they are unable to do so because all of their data is incorrect, as if they have traveled between the third and fourth dimensions. Peter departs from his bunker in the meantime and takes a security camera so he can examine the sphere on his own. The computer alerts the crew that someone has opened the repair airlock and that an unknown object is on its way. Everyone is startled when they unexpectedly spot a frozen Peter floating outside. Dr. Leona, who has known Peter for eight years and knows that he wasn't that kind of person, refuses to accept Dr. David's theory that Peter stopped things because he couldn't bear to live with his error. She is reprimanded by Stephen for sobbing over the villain who has brought about humanity's demise and is given Peter's responsibilities moving forward. Later, David reveals that after his daughter passed away, he also considered ending things but decided to try to be of help. He's feeling worthless again now that the assignment is complete, but Steven assures him that they will find a solution. The spacecraft then encounters a planet with volcanic rock. Despite the lack of oxygen, the outer environment is not hostile, so they would simply need breathing masks. Steven, who is ready to land since he believes it's the ideal choice to carry out their plan, is stopped by Captain Ryan, pointing out that since they hadn't conducted a thorough inspection of the planet yet, Steven is carelessly endangering the crew's safety. However, Steven doesn't need a damn, and reminds everyone that he is in charge here. Officer Richard will remain aboard the mothership while the squad departs on a shuttle. The braking thrusters must be used in order to halt the shuttle's descent, as soon as it approaches the planet and encounters a fierce storm. Although it will exhaust all of their fuel and prohibit them from turning around, it is their only hope of surviving, the crew drops out as the shuttle touches down, and Steven dreams of the time he gave Amy a bracelet crafted from a specific piece of the ancient sphere, trying to connect the two things that meant the most to him. The group awakens a little while later and resumes their job right away. Although there hasn't been any serious damage to the shuttle, they are stuck because of limited fuel. Steven doesn't see a problem with this because they were there to remain for four years, and even if they didn't land where they planned to, he is confident that they can use one of the enormous caves as a dome to launch the sphere from. A strange ooze begins to fall from the walls in the shuttle's secret passageways. When Richard checks the other rooms in the mothership, he discovers the goo as well as the missing camera. Once everyone is dressed appropriately, the crew transports the sphere to the closest cave and successfully activates it there. Then they go back to the shuttle to start gathering data, but Brian stops them and declares martial law has been declared in the station. He presents some documents Richard provided him while the physicians were at work in order to justify his choice. In order to protect himself from accusations of faults in the future, Peter recorded a video of himself inspecting the sphere. He notices something moving in the shadows when he opens the engine door. It suddenly jumps on him, kills him, and throws him out of the ship. The shape of this thing can't be captured by the camera, but Richard claims that after reviewing all the film, he has determined that it has been with them ever since they left Earth, since it entered the sphere like the Trojan horse. It most likely was the reason for the jump's failure, but it is no longer on the mothership, instead, 
It has descended to the planet with the shuttle. Richard is able to find it because the alien interferes with the electromagnetic field, which accounts for the poor recording. David abruptly interrupts the conversation because he has discovered something strange about the system. The Sphere is currently running a different program than the one they uploaded. Ryan prevents Stephen from returning to the Sphere by telling him that he won't allow him to let any longer and by accusing him of concealing secrets. Ryan says that Richard also discovered video of Stephen spotting that strange shape months earlier on Earth, indicating that he was aware of the threat, but failed to alert anyone, making Peter's demise his responsibility. Stephen is offended by this charge and rushes out of the room, remembering all the effort he and David put into this project. Due to his ongoing grief, Stephen wasn't sure if David should have accompanied them, but David persuaded him he was alright and wanted to improve the planet to stop other children from passing just like his daughter did. A short while later, Stephen runs into David and invites him to sneak out via the airlock with him to check on the sphere. When Stephen reminds David of his daughter and the future of the Earth, David is persuaded to defy Ryan, even though he first doesn't want to. As soon as they arrive at the cave, they discover that someone changed the settings, causing the sphere to produce an alien life form more quickly than it did life on Earth. David begs Stephen to leave and talk to everyone, but Stephen starts working on the sphere's settings right once. When David sees the alien approaching on their radar at that same moment, he fires a warning shot to try to encourage Steven to move. When Steven answers by pulling out his own weapon, they see the alien had already entered the cave before things could become nasty. Both men start running away after Steven takes a piece of the sphere with him. They can hear the creature approaching due to its noises and shadows. When they emerge from the cave, they can see it clearly for the first time but they are able to return to the shuttle and close the airlock before the creature can attack them. David criticizes Stephen for endangering their life, but Stephen says the sphere is more crucial and that he won't think twice the next time. When Stephen says they'll need to use force to stop him, Ryan punches him after arriving to chastise Stephen as well. The crew is abruptly alerted by the computer that the integrity of the module has been violated. Leona leaves her room to investigate the problem and discovers a lot of goo in the hallway before being abruptly yanked back into another location. Frank is the one who tells her that the alien has broken through the bottom deck and is currently inside the lander. The pair moves cautiously toward the lab's hiding place as it becomes increasingly difficult to breathe. The lights dim and a peculiar noise can be heard emanating from behind the plant units in a split second. This indicates that the alien is present so Frank forces Leona to leave the room. As she exits the room and heads down the hallway, she overhears Frank screams as the alien suffocates him. Ryan yells at Steven for bringing the alien back with him. As Leona meets with the rest of the team in the control room and informs them of what transpired, they lost touch with Richard and were unable to see the rest of the ship due to the creature's hole in the hull, damage to the generator, and malfunctioning cameras. Since it's his fault, Steven offers to go and reconnect everything, since there is no other option. However, doing so would be extremely challenging if they can't find the creature. Steven carefully approaches the generator while carrying a weapon and succeeds in re-establishing communication. The moment Steven tries to leave, he starts hearing those noises. The team can now track the alien and warns him that it is close by. Fortunately, Ryan acts quickly and uses a metal rope to haul the man back into the control room. The group then decides on a strategy to smoke the alien out of the ship. Leona opens the airlocks and lab door while Steven waits outside to serve as bait, running to a different room to hide when the alien emerges. Richard tries to start the engine to burn it out, but he is unable to do so since the alien is interfering with the signal as it quickly starts moving through the airlocks. Leona responds to Steven's call for assistance as he flees for his life, but just then the alien emerges, giving Richard access to the engine once more. The beast is damaged by the fire, but this isn't enough to kill it. So Stephen, who is being carried inside by David, runs back inside with Leona. As they seal the door and leave the alien's limb inside, a tentacle injures David's arm. Ryan closes the airlocks, and the others get to reseal the hole, while the beast makes its way back to the cave. Soon after the team discovers Frank's body, Leona chooses to take her own life out of grief, and Stephen starts to consider Amy once more. In an effort to persuade him to stay, she explained that she was developing a vaccine and, more importantly, that she was expecting. Despite this, Stephen decided to stay because saving the planet was more important than his personal life. Stephen delivers the tentacle so that David can examine it. While David goes to the lab to have his wound stitched, he learns that the creature is a biorobot formed of the same substance as the sphere, indicating that the sphere's original intent was to create these creatures. David learns from Stephen that the tentacle infected him with a microbe that possesses a potent defense mechanism, making his blood the only source of a vaccine that can save Earth. The alien is a transponder. And this is how his race colonizes planets, because as soon as Steven makes a cut in the tentacle, the lights flash erratically, 
and he recalls the image he saw back on Earth. Ryan locks Steven up in the lab and informs him that he is being arrested for endangering everyone's lives when Steven determines that they must kill the alien and reset the sphere. When Ryan points out that lives are disposable to Steven, David concurs, noting that Steven has never given a damn about people and just cares about playing the hero. Steven is reminded of their previous quarrel when Amy accused him of having a savior complex before throwing her bracelet into the trash. They didn't jump through space, rather, they jumped through time, according to Steven's theory, which Richard later confirms after looking at the travel logs. They are still on Earth, but 4 billion years have passed since the beginning of life. The replica sphere they brought is the same one that future paleontologists will discover. Steven becomes pleased when he finds the sphere piece he took earlier, is the same one he uses in the future to build Amy's bracelet. So he goes on to write a message on it to instruct Amy how to activate the sphere they left behind, oblivious to the fact that David's wound is getting worse. While dealing with the news that the team failed their mission, Amy appears to Stephen's lab in the present. Richard unexpectedly informs Stephen of some worrying information. Ryan is getting ready to blow up the sphere with explosives and has switched off his radio to prevent objections. When Ryan is found in possession of the bombs, Stephen begs Richard to reopen the airlock so he may out, and as soon as he does, he starts outlining how they can come up with a better scheme. A shot that suddenly kills Ryan during their chat is fired by David, who had fled via the airlock and had become insane due to the illness. Making him believe the alien has picked him to assist makes everything right because humans are a sphere malfunction. To divert David, Steven hurls Leona's Rubik's Cube at the wall. Steven then shoots David, causing him to flee wounded. The bomb is then set off, and Steven exits the building to fire a flare to attract the alien's attention. David opens fire on Steven as he runs down the hallway and forces him into hiding. Steven manages to chase David to the control room and locks it up there. That instant, the alien enters through the broken door and comes up to Steven, who uses a rapid shot to knock it away. As Steven starts to flee, the alien pursues him. When Steven eventually returns to the control room. He runs into David, who tries to kill him. The arrival of the alien, who stops the beast's progress by killing him first, gives Steven the opportunity to escape the shuttle, just before the bomb detonates, and ends the beast's life. After briefly falling asleep outside, Steven is roused when Richard tries to make touch with anyone still alive. Steven instructs Richard to wait back while he goes back to the cave to use the sphere, since the storm is too intense for him to come and help him. Amy locates her bracelet once more in the present, and, after finally reading the message, activates the sphere with it. The couple then reconnect in a fusion of the past, and now, and Steven rushes to give his wife the vaccine's recipe, before confessing his love, just as the connection breaks off. Amy sobs when she realizes she is now a widow after Steven perishes in the cave from a lack of air. Thanks to the vaccine that is now making the world a better place, Amy is raising a wonderfully healthy baby many months later. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel.